Sorry about the noise outside. The people that are picking up all the trees and limbs have just showed up to my neighborhood, so could be a little loud um, in the next little bit. All right, so let me share the screen. Oh. All right. We'll talk about what's going on. Okay, now share. <clears throat> so we got uh, this is it plus one more. And that'll be the end of the uh, Zooms. Come on, Zoom. Come on. Share. <sighs> Not having any luck. Share it again. For some reason it's not sharing. Stop that sharing. Hold on. Uh, with cable. Cable's hooked up. Share. Share. Sharing's paused. You're screen sharing. No, I'm not. You guys can't see anything. Is it black screen for you? Unplug it and plug it in. Okay. Sorry. Ah. What the? It is a black screen, right? It's not sharing anything. Yeah. Hey. Hold on. That's a first. Uh. Whiteboard, iPhone, unplug. I'm going to, have to try another plug in. Riveting. Riveting. Now let's try it. Okay. Nope. Ha! Ah! Uh -huh. Well, without sharing that, it's going to be kind of rough. You're sharing a screen, it says. But I'll try the chat, see what you guys are saying. Yeah, I agree. J Jacob says, what's going on? Huh. Um, anybody ever have this problem? The, sheet, or the screen won't share? Because that's kind of a, okay, I'll try and share it. Let me try and share it another way. And then I'll try and share it through AirPlay. And also, I'm going to turn off the recording here. Hold on. Recording. All right. Sorry about that. A little hiccup there. Monday, we're uh, one more day after this. And let's look and see what's going on this week. Um, last night, uh, we did the Zoom help. Now it's about to get loud with these guys out here. Tonight at midnight is the, uh, you got to turn in your take home test 2B. Um, we, if you watched last night's video, that helps like an hour and 20 minutes. That helps a lot. And then after we get done here, and once I get the recording up and put the screenshots up, um, I'm going to later on put together my version of it and I'll post that video at four o'clock tomorrow the video key. Now, Wednesday, really not much goes on for the virtual kids. Not much is happening Wednesday. You can just go ahead and keep getting ready. In class, though, we'll be taking the test, paper, pencil, um, the test 2B, and they'll hand everything in in class. Uh, it says for virtual kids, it says virtual students will take to starting at 1 p.m. on Thursday. On Thursday. So I want to give the I want to give the in-class kids Wednesday and then Thursday morning to make it up if they couldn't take a Wednesday for some reason to get that done. And then um, you all will have, so you'll have from 1 p.m. Thursday to 5 p.m. Friday to complete the test, okay? Um, I said the virtual black and blue is due on Saturday. Um, yeah, 
So here's what here's what'll happen. So starting at 1 p.m., um, you go ahead and take take the test. Uh, it'll you'll, you'll turn in your packet. You need it that you need to turn your packet. You need to turn in your notes on my front porch, and then I will put in your slot. I will put the test starting at 1 p.m. Uh, Friday, uh, Thursday. So then you'll when you turn in, you can turn it into your slot, turn in your, and then take take out your uh, test. And then you give yourself an hour. Okay, we're on the honor system here. Give yourself an hour, and you take that test whenever you once you pick it up. You don't have to take it like right then. You could go home and eat or whatever you got to do. And then, but once you start taking it, then you got to get an hour. And then you'll turn it, um, you'll turn it back into the porch. And uh, when you're done, now you have till, you have till 5 p.m. Friday to turn it back into the porch. And then um, there'll be a, now, okay, now this Zoom is gonna be a very interesting Zoom. <laughs> This Zoom we have with virtual students. Now, if you're sitting there at a 98%, then don't worry about it. But if you're fighting for that A or fighting for that B, uh, then um, maybe you want to come to our Zoom uh, party from 5 to 5.30 on Friday. And somehow, I haven't figured out yet, but somehow we're going to do a black and blue, even though I have your test <laughs> and uh, I know what I'm going to do. If you are at that Zoom, that live Zoom, and um, I'm not going to record it. I'm not going to record it. It'll be a live Zoom and I'm going to go over the problems that we went over in class. And if you're at that live Zoom, then you're going to get those points added to those problems. Because I'm gonna assume that you're, you would have been writing them down, but you'll sit and you'll you know, participate. And then that's the way I'll trail, I'll compensate you some points, okay? That'll be bizarre, but we'll try. Mr. Asky? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for the test, do we, uh, is there not going to be a PDF of it that we could print out? So do we have to go to your house first? And well, the thing is, you got to turn, you got to hand in your packet and you got to hand in your notes and your notebook and you're going to be here anyway. Right? You might as well pick it up. P if you do, a, give me a PDF, then I've got to print that. Then you send me back a PDF then I got to print it off to, for me just to grade it. Right? I mean, so if you're gonna if you're gonna be handing in your packet and your notes, your notebook, why not just pick up a test? See what I'm saying? Otherwise, you got to take pictures of every of all 16 pages, plus your take-home test, plus your notes. You're gonna send me like a 30 PDFs. At some point, it just gets to be crazy. Why would you do that? Now, if it won't work out where for some reason you can't come to my porch i guess i can go to your porch okay but we'll talk about it uh if that if that arrangement doesn't work okay so um that that's the plan as of monday i'll see if the plan changes a little bit as of tuesday but that's still the plan for now all right, then there's all this stuff on the on the home page on the take home test, I mean, on home page on the uh, on the canvas uh, of details of this week. And so you can read that over at your leisure. Now on this um, on this cover sheet, and there are cover sheets. There are colored cover sheets. You can print this out. This is a visual PDF of this, but there are colored cover sheets orange, I think they are, on the front porch if you want to grab one of those. But you do need to fill this stuff out. You need to fill in, I'll fill in, I'll fill in this point right here. I'll fill this in, I'll fill this in. You need to fill in uh, this other stuff. You need to fill in uh, the discussion. Well, you, pro you probably didn't get much of those, but you got the Zoom points, you got the Facebook points, so you fill those in. 
And then make sure you check the keys on Facebook, all the keys pretty much up through to even to pay truth, even two fifteens on there now. Uh, all the keys are on there, not two sixteen. We'll talk about two sixteen in class tomorrow. We'll talk about it here uh, as far as we get. Uh, you guys don't worry about dolphins if you're if you're virtual. You don't worry about dolphins. You turn you you turn that paper in already, and then make sure you include your take home test and your notes. Okay. Now, if you're looking for something to beef up your notes, you probably need about five pages of decent notes. You know, normal. Um, you know with normal, you know, this kind of density of words, um, about five pages, because that gives you about three credits, so about, that's 15 credits, and 15 credits would give you 100. So you need about five pages. Well, you, maybe, you're, maybe you're taking notes now, maybe you're not. You could just, as long as it has to do with physics. So one thing you might do if you, um, is to find a good YouTube's on, Whatever, whatever interests you. Well, here's some stuff. Uh, the Joe Rogan's got some good interviews. And he interviews a scientist. Like uh, last week, he interviewed a he interviewed a, an astronaut. Interviewed an astronaut that's on, that was on the ISS for like eight months or something, and it was interesting. So it's a good, you know, as long as it's do with physics. Here he's with Sean Carroll. Uh, he's also with uh, then Brian Cox has also been interviewed. Brian Cox is great. Okay, and we did our joke Monday. Let's see. Uh, there's the equation sheet you're going to get. I've added to this one before I came on the air here. I added on the second equation sheet. I added uh, the the uh, orange quad. Okay, so that'll be on there, and it'll be it'll be when when, when you come and get your test. The the three equation sheets will be there with the test. Okay, in page protectors. I noticed though, someone noticed this last night that the orange quad already is on an example on the third equation sheet. And there's the orange quad. Okay, well, I wanted to show, I wanna show a video. And boy, man, I don't know if it's gonna work. Um, I guess I won't, won't be able to do it because I don't know if it'll, I don't know if it'll do through airplay. It would through a cable. Oh, no, it might. Ho, oh, ho. Oh. Let's try it. Let's try it. It will stop this sharing. I showed the class this video. Uh, okay. Let's share this. Let me share my screen now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me call up that video. It's an interesting, it's about a four minute little video and it's pretty good. Okay, can you get it? Brian Cox is a, okay, hold on, hold on. This hold is on. NASA's space power okay, no, facility. You're not seeing that, hold on. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll try it again. I have some share issues today. Not my best work. Okay. We are recording. Let me turn this. Let me try to share again here. Share screen. There it is. Okay. So here we go. So this is Brian Cox. He's Professor at University of Manchester. It's in Cleveland, Ohio, and it is the world's biggest vacuum chamber. It's used to test spacecraft in the conditions of outer space, and it does that by pumping out the 30 tons of air. So there's, these are the things we talked about in class. There's 30 tons of air in that room. So I think in our classroom, there's probably 500 pounds at least of air. We could actually determine that. Air's Sorry, the point is, air is heavy. And um, in one room there, you, you can walk right through it, but it's 30 tons of air. So they got to pump all that out. Uh, that is not easy to do. It takes about three hours. And they get it down to like two grams of air left. And that is similar to outer space. 
Outer space is a vacuum, but it's not a perfect vacuum. There's still particles up there. This chamber until there are about two grams left. And it's kind of got an eccentric construction, which is part of its history. It was built in the 1960s as a nuclear. So you guys are seeing this, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, test facility to test nuclear propulsion <laughs> systems. And that meant that they built it out of aluminium to make the radiation easier to deal with. Aluminium is not the best thing, the strongest material to build a vacuum chamber out of. So they built out a concrete skin, which is part radiation shielding and part an external pressure vessel. Now, if they didn't build that, that whole building would collapse, right? It would just, you just cr crunched because of all the air pressure. So there's 14.7 pounds of pressure per inch. Uh, that's, that's just from our atmosphere just pushing in on you. So if you if you multiply that, you get about 2,000 pounds of pressure, uh, of force, 2,000 pounds of force pushing in on you every square foot of your body. So if you take a square foot around your stomach, that's 2,000 pounds of force pushing in on you. So the question is, well, why don't you just implode? It's because you have 2,000 pounds of pressure pushing out, of force pushing out. And so it's an equilibrium. Uh, when you, if you cut open your gut, all your, all your guts come like a jack in a, jack in a box because it's all pressured in there. Okay. So this thing can take the force that's present on the outside when it's pumped out to the conditions of outer space. Galileo's experiment was simple took a heavy object and a light one and dropped them at the same time to see which fell fastest. Now in this case, the feathers fell to the ground at a slower rate than the bowling ball because of air resistance. So in order to see the true nature of gravity, we have to remove the air. It takes three hours to pump out the 800,000 cubic feet of air chamber. Okay, we dropped two millitor in the last 30 minutes, but once it's complete, there's a near perfect vacuum inside. 6104 manual, 10% open, station one, go for drive. PCD 30-1, pressure set point at 240 PSI. Look, look, that's my doppelganger. You know, I, there, there are people out there that look just like you, or somewhere in the world, or someone looks just like you. Go for drive. Isaac Newton would say that the ball and the feather fall because there's a force pulling them down, gravity. But Einstein imagined the scene very differently. The 
happiest thought of his life was this. The reason the bowling ball and the feather fall together is because they're not falling. They're standing still. There is no force acting on them at all. He reasoned that if you couldn't see the background, there'd be no way of knowing that the ball and the feathers were being accelerated towards the earth. So he concluded they weren't. All right, so we're going, that part, uh, let me go back, stop that sharing. So that part at the end, we'll discuss next semester when we talk about Einstein. When Einstein was coming up in the late 1800s, that's when elevators were just starting to become more used and Einstein became a real fan of elevators. And there's a whole thing called elevator physics where you can, an elevator is great because it's a, it's an inertial, it's a non-inertial frame of reference. Um, so you can do all kinds of cool things in it and we'll get into all that, but we have to first understand forces better and uh, inertia and all that. So we'll do that uh, next semester. Okay, so I wanted to show that because because we we in the in the classroom we were dropping basketball and tennis ball at the same time and you can't tell that they hit the ground at the same time, so they fall at the same rate. But when you say feather, people think, well, okay, a feather won't. But you take out the air, and sure enough, a feather and a grand piano would fall at the same rate. Okay, and and you can you can explain that with Einstein, and you can explain you can also explain that though with Newtonian physics, as well. So let's go back now, share this other screen. I'm gonna try one more time with the cable and let's see if it works this time. That's bothering me, it does not work. Okay, sorry about that. That's a new one. I'm gonna share with AirPlay then. Okay, so that's Brian Cox and Hold on. Okay. So, um, gotta share it. Screen mirroring. Okay. Um, but yeah, look up, Brian Cox does some really good, oh, sorry, still isn't sharing it. Uh, I don't know why now. Set up, okay, let's go over here to set up. Sorry, I'm trying to see why it's not sharing again. Yes, it's the same, no. Nope. So now let's go to screen mirroring, screen mirroring, choose, I did. There, okay, God, I don't know what the idea, what is going on? Why it's so hard to share today. All right, so um, if you see anything on Brian Cox, he, is, he has some really interesting uh, things on Nova and stuff on TV. So watch him if you're looking for something to um, fill out your notes. Okay, um, now I put this challenge out to them. This was third hour, and third hour with uh, this, if I'm talking about, if I'm talking about the, um, yeah, this, which I showed you guys last time, and this was a way to find, to get G to, we've gotten as close as 9.80 in class uh, with this in previous years. And so I put the challenge out to them uh, that if somebody can come in at lunch um, and beat it, beat what we had, which was 9.5% error, which is not good, then I would give them points. And so today, an all-star group, a student from first hour, a student from second hour, and a student from third hour came in um, to, so it was Roman, it was Finn, it was Adam, came in to do it, um, to show that they could, they, could, they could beat this. Well, they did it and we, we used a different, I kind of worked with them, we used a different formula. We used the third orange and we set it so that 
it measured the instantaneous velocity of the ball. We found the diameter of the ball that was falling. And so then it'll come on and off as that, as that ball falls past the, uh, falls past that photo gate. It'll turn on as the ball comes into the photo gate, it'll turn off as the ball goes out. And so if you take the diameter of the ball uh, and then that's your Delta X, then the time it takes, because it goes in there is 10 thousandths of a second. You can divide that by the time and that gives you a V naught and then you can find a V final and they went a certain distance. I don't know whether it's a, you know, 20 centimeters or something below that. And that was their Delta X, Delta Y in this case. And then they, from there, they found A, they found G. They found what G should be and they got it to, they got it to 9.79, I believe. So they got it to 1%. They were one percent off, which means that uh, they got a lot of bonus. Okay, uh, they got like twenty-five points bonus each. Um, anyway, so so that that made me feel better that we could get it close with that equipment. It wasn't a waste of money. Then we started talking about um, back to this thing where once again, I'm talking about things that you guys weren't there for. Uh, this was when we tried to determine how much error humans have. And we talked about this in here, I think on Friday, where uh, you can find out what your time is. And so I don't go through all this. And I said, for me, like it would be point out, it would be 0.2 seconds, that's my reaction time. And so we said, well, if that's the case, um, then we're looking back at our data and our data from in class, let's just pick somebody's, say it's first hour. And so we take this data from in class and say, we, we said it took 0.83 for the ball to go from the ceiling to the floor. And if you take that and, and attach your, let's say, let's say it's not me, say it's a student with 0.15 seconds of error in their reaction time. Well, if you take that then, that's called tolerance, that plus or minus, that 0.83 seconds that they thought it took may have been as low as, it may have been as low as 0.68 seconds. It may have been as high as 0.98 seconds because there's a, you know, we have a slow reaction time. So, which means that that eight is that first digit, that tens digit, that's tenths digit is not, um, it's, it's iffy. So the very first digit is iffy. Um, which means that you only have one sig fig. Remember, as you're reading a number from left to right, if it's a measured number, the first iffy is the last siggy. So I have one sig fig, which means that everything is it sitting at one sig fig. So all your final answers, like we said, 7.3, we got to round that to seven because it can only be one sig fig. I mean, if I'm one sig fig guy and I owe you $14, how much am I going to pay you? If one sig fig guy owes you $14, how much will, will he pay you? One sig fig guy. $10. Exactly. Well, one sig fig guy will only pay you $10 because that four, because if it's only one sig fig, you read the number left to right, uh, that means that that four, I, 14 is two sig figs. I'm saying I, I know it's 14. But this zero, this is a placeholder. So this is not, so this is not significant. So if one sig fig guy, let's say one sig fig guy owes you, um, say that, uh, that you owe him $16, how much does he want from you? How much will one sig fig demand from you? You understand? He owes you sixteen dollars. You say that you owe Sig Fig guys one Sig Fig guy sixteen dollars. How much does he want? Twenty. Exactly. He wants twenty because he only deals in one Sig Fig. You see, 
So it, the, the thing is that one, with one sig fig, the world gets really weird. And so you can't, so that's why we had to go to the stadium. Somebody asked, um, so we went to the stadium to gain a sig fig. That's why we went to the stadium. And someone asked last night, is there gonna be an essay question? I think Adam asked that, is there gonna be an essay question on this test? And uh, normally I do put one on there, but there, was, but there wasn't an essay question on the take-home test. And so I said, well, I don't think so. But then uh, remember that I can, I can um, put, I said last night that because there's this new material that's not on the take-home test that we're learning, that we learned on Thursday, Friday, today, and tomorrow, I, I'll have to somehow represent that on the test. So, there, so I said that I can hold back 30 points, up to 30 points, 15%. I can put as stuff that wasn't on the take home. That's my rule, 30 points out of 200. So a essay question might be, um, and this is like, you just gonna have to say, well, if it's there, it's there. But the essay question might be, why did we go to the stadium? Uh, and the reason is we went there to get another sig fig because when, at the stadium, when I drop, when I drop something, now we have uh, at the stadium times, um, we now look, look at this as first hour, but see at the stadium times, now we have more than one second. So when I, when I look at this, let's say this is our average number. Now I look at it, I'm sure that that one is right. It wasn't two seconds, right? The first iffy is the two. That gives me two SIGs. So from the stadium data, I got two significant figures. One year, it was really nasty. We couldn't get over there. So we had to go to the North Gym and I dropped it from, and then they, they stood down on the, on the, the uh, basketball court and I dropped it and it was like 0.95 seconds. So I had to get above a second. So there was a, they had a ladder, they had a ladder there. So I got up on the ladder and then I dropped it and it went to like 1.05 or something. And boom, once we got above a second, now we could have two Siggies. So you, so for us, because of our tolerance is so bad humans, uh, now the tolerance with the photo gates was like, you know, we had, we had like three or four significant figures. So that's really, really good. You can trust those photo gates. And I wish I had, you know, 20 photo gates where every, every group can do them, but we don't, they're kind of expensive. Okay. So we spent a long time talking about all that today in class. And we, I think in here, we already did this. I sent them to the board. I think we did this like Thursday last week um, where we converted, we did the first thing in 216. We came up with the uh, three blue equations. Is that right? Does that sound right to you guys? And if we didn't, did we not, did we not do this? I, think, I don't remember doing that. Okay. Well, the reason I think we did it, we did something like that because of this, because this is from, this is from our discussion. Maybe it was Friday, but that is the second blue. That's how we found time uh, using second blue. So I think, okay, I, I think I know what happened. I did it a little bit. I didn't, we didn't do the whole thing. Well, take a look at these. I, I want you to write these down. This goes on your 216. All right, so write these down. Um, the orange kinematics are the general kinematic equations. But when something free falls, uh, then we have a subset. And um, the subset is just for free fall, meaning that the only force acting on it is well, we call it, we're, we're Newtonians, so, you know, Einstein would not agree, but we, we call it um, the force due to gravity. And so if that's the only force out there, in other words, no air drag, there's no rocket attached to it, okay, and no wind, if it's just falling or rising, coming back down, that's a special case of physics problems, free fall problems. And so in those free fall problems, we use the blue equations I have on the screen there. Um, notice I've hardwired into it the minuses. Now, my first year to teach physics, 
I guess this one blew past me when I was when I was taking it in college. But G, this G here cannot be negative. G is a magnitude. G is a magnitude. And I didn't realize that. And I made it, I just said, well, okay, G is negative, right? Because it's pointing down. But then when you get to pulley systems and machines, all of a sudden that becomes a nightmare. <laughs> and I had, and then I realized, oh my goodness. So from then on, since the second year I've taught physics, I've always taught that G itself is a positive value. So you have to hardwire in the negatives into the equation. And that just keeps you honest, okay? So it's a lot like the orange. Uh, you won't find these blue in any kind of textbook. You'll find the orange, but um, the blue is just there to kind of help kids categorize, you know, categorize equations. Okay, I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this with blue equations. Okay, and all of 216 is all blue. Tomorrow we'll probably get the front. We'll work on the front, and that's probably as far as we'll get. Okay, now. I want to spend the rest of the time though today uh, working on, check the chat real quick. Okay, uh, thank you. J Jacob was answering my, my sig fig guy. I want to work on, um, this is a mess, but I want to work on the back. I want to work on finish 214 today. Okay, let's finish 214. So get out 214. We started it. And uh, this is like, a, this is all, everything got overlapped. Worst nightmare, worst nightmare. Oh my gosh. I forgot to hit a button. And then when I did with this with my fingers, everything got wiped out. Okay, fine. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to move stuff. I'm just going to erase things. So you erase all this and start over. We did the front, right? We're working on the back. We finished the front. And the front is in the, the front is, the front's on the screenshots. So I just want to work on the back. Golly, what a mess. Okay, get all these little guys out of there. Fair enough. Okay. So let's work on this on the back of 214. Well, on the front, and I probably got all messed up. Yeah, I did. Okay, everything's messed up now. Punt, punt, punt. Wipe everything out. Destroy everything. Luckily, this has all gotten, uh, this is all archived. This is not, this has been my worst day. <laughs> this is the worst Zoom I've ever done. Ugh. So Monday. Okay. So little remnants are still hanging around, but trying to get it. There we go. Get a clean copy. There we go. So maybe, nope. Okay. Monday we did, or last week we did the front. There we go. I'm trying to get it so it works. There we go. Okay, let me blow that up. Okay, Monday we did this on the front. And remember that when you rewrite, when you redraw them, the arrows, those are called ghosts. Uh, and then the resultant, and the ghost should be a different color. And the, the resultant's a different color. Resultant goes to the very beginning to the very end. Okay, so now let's try that over here. Only now we've added a little wrinkle to this. Because um, you can take, like if I take A and I say negative A, that just takes the arrow and flips it around. Okay. If I say 2a, that makes it twice. If I say a half a, that makes it a half the length. It doesn't affect the angle. It doesn't affect the orientation. It just affects the length. Okay, so we have this problem. And I saw one like this on an AP exam. So that, well, it's probably, they think it's important. So we have to get this equation right here. We're supposed to do what it says to do in that equation. So I have A, B, and C on your paper. You should have your paper there. 
uh, and we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna double B, we're gonna we're gonna cut C in half, we're gonna add C, add that to A, and then we're gonna get our resultant. Okay, now cheating is for me to to copy this and move it up here. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, like you're doing. And first thing I want to do is I want to do a line of action. So I want to do a line of action at B because I'm going to leave A alone, but let me get a line of action going here. And that's just a dashed line that extends forever and ever and ever on both sides. Uh, and then I'll go ahead, while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and get a line of action going on, on C as well. Okay, so line of action on C. And this is, this is all there, of course it's virtual. It's all there to help you visualize. Basically, I'm being lazy and I don't wanna get a protractor. Okay, so now we take, we take our ruler and we're going to recreate B at the, the tail of B is gonna, gonna attach to the head of A. So I take my ruler and I'm gonna slide it up here. Then I gotta get the length of B because I gotta double that. So, two, three. All right, so I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna redraw it up here. Now you redraw, it. I, I redraw these in different colors. They're ghosts. It's not really B, it's the ghost of B. This is 2B. That's 2B. Okay, so I've just redrawn it. Uh, and then C, I'm supposed to take C, cut it in half and attach and flip it over, flip it around because it says minus one half C. So now let's see now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No, okay, four and a half. And, uh, okay, now I'm gonna redo one, okay. And that's minus one half C, what I just drew, okay? So let you catch up with me. So I've drawn the ghosts of uh, 2B and minus one half C. And I've added them up head to tail so I have A plus 2B minus 1FC, and then the resultant goes from the very beginning to the very end. So I'll make it red, like my resultant's red, sort of reddish. So there it is. That is the resultant. And you show it as R with an arrow above it. And it's just a mathematical resultant. Now, when we get into this with uh, free body diagrams, the resultant will be summation of forces, Okay, the result will be summation of momentums. We'll do all those kind of things, okay? Or, it, or maybe the resultant is initial momentum or final momentum. So we use these in collisions. We use these in free body diagrams, explosions, is you use these vectors to represent what's going on. But that's the mathematics of it, okay? Questions on head to tail before we finish this up with a little uh, Sokotoa. Okay. Uh, Sokotoa, let's come back to that in a second. Let's look at this one down here real quick. It's the last thing we'll do. Let's look at this. I want to get you guys ahead. This is about as far as the lead class, second hour is the lead class, but. So what first one, I wanna add these two vectors up, but I wanna add them up head to tail. So I'm going to call this A and B, uh, vector A, vector B, whatever. I'm gonna redraw this one. I'm gonna redraw uh, this one up here, and then I'm gonna add those up. So let's make it a little messy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I got an idea. It's gonna get too messy. So let me cut this out and I'll and I'll use it twice. Yeah. 
Okay. Cut the whole thing out. Oops. You go ahead and redraw it. I'm cutting the whole thing out. Duplicate it. Okay. So I'll, I'll do it two ways. One way I'm doing head to tail. One way I'm going to do the component method. All right. So first the head to tail. Maybe I can salvage something here today from this mess. All right. I'm going to redraw this guy. And uh, it's always good to have a line of action going. And you're redrawing. Just helps your eyes. You think railroad tracks. Okay. And let me get the links. I'm not, I'm not doubling it or anything like that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to redraw it. Okay. That is that one redrawn. And then the resultant goes to the very beginning to the very end. So my resultant then would look like this. Very beginning to very end. Mr. Askey. Yeah. So how do you know where to stop on the ghosts? Well, it's the same length. It's the same orientation and the same length. All I'm doing is I'm redrawing that. I mean, you know, if we all had iPads, I would just go like this. I would cut it out. I would just cut it out and then drag it up here, you know, but we don't all have iPads, so we can't do that. So, let me get rid of that. so I'm just redrawing the exact same vector. So it's the same length, same orientation. But this, if I combine these two vectors, now maybe it's, okay, how about this? Maybe it is, maybe, okay, this, let's say it's a mule. This is a, this is a crossroads, you got crossroads here. And you got old Farmer Joe pulling on the mule here and Farmer Fred wants that mule. So Farmer Fred is pulling down here into his, into his field and Farmer, J Farmer Joe is pulling into his field with a rope. And so the direction of pull and the force they're pulling with looks like this. Well, which way is the mule going to go? The mule is going to go that way. Okay. It's a combination of arrows. It's a combination, in that case, of forces, a summation of forces between Farmer Joe and Farmer Fred. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Here's another way of doing it. And we probably, we'll probably use this method to add vectors about 30% of the time. The one we're gonna use most of the time is this method I'm gonna show you now. This is called the component method. I don't need, because I don't need a ruler anymore, but I do need a calculator now. This is the component method. Component method, you can get more siggies out of it, more significant figures. It's a little bit, it's not as descriptive, it's not as visual. Um, you, it, sometimes you get lost in all the numbers, especially when we're adding like seven vectors together. But it is, it's the one that computers use, you know, like a, in, in gaming, it's what you would do. So for the component method, now we are the lead class. For the component method, you turn each of these into right triangles, okay? They already are right triangles. So, well, I'm gonna turn them into right triangles. They're the hypotenuses. Remember that the vector at an angle is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I'm gonna color in the right triangles here. We have this one. This vector is that represents or turns into a right triangle. Good grief. Get a more of a thank you. Okay, turns into a right triangle, and then this. Remember that. Remember these right triangles emanate from the x-axis, from the horizontal axis. I don't know whether this is a profile view or a map view. If it's Farmer Fred and Farmer Joe, that was a map view looking down. Okay, then I'll make this one purple. Okay. Now, I'm going to add these up. 
but computers like computers cannot add arrows um they can only add components remember it's zeros and ones right so they can only add it's like binary you can only add components so i'm going to find the components i'm going to i'm going to describe each one of these vectors in terms of and here it comes back i roof and j roof so this guy you thought it was going away didn't you well here we go we got i roof and j roof so let's call this vector a and vector b And so vector A, uh, I can write as, well, it's 16 I, 16 I roof, right? Plus, we went 16 over, and then it went up eight, eight J roof. And this could be, I don't know, let's make it meters and meters. Say it's two dimensional, so it's meters and meters. So they'll put a big bracket around and say meters, okay? Just to add some units. So far, so good. Now you do it for B. On your paper, you give me B. In I's and J's. Okay, you got it? For B, we look at it. We say, okay, looks like I went to the left of my purple right triangle, went to the left six. So that's negative six I roof. I went down uh, 18, so that's negative 18 uh, J roof meters, all right? So this is called stacking. And sometimes we have, like I say, seven, five, six, seven vectors, and we stack them all together, okay? Because there's seven forces, say it's, um, you know, it's a car going down up a hill. So then you got you got frictions, you got gravity, you got wind, you got air drag, you got normal force. You have all these things that are affecting the car at the same time. And so we're trying to see what's going on with that car. These are the kind of things we do second semester. So you stack them first, and then you rack them. This is called stack and rack. So you stack those together, this two this time, and then I rack them. Well, to rack them is like rack it up, you know, like in pool, rack them. So you add them all together. So we just add them up. The resultant then, the resultant will be the two added together. So for the resultant, we have 16 minus six is 10, 10 I roof, and then eight minus 18 is minus 10, 10 J roof meters and that's my resultant now i want to draw my resultant and so to draw my resultant uh resultant emanates from here the origin and he goes 10 over and 10 down so 10 over and 10 down let's see if i go 10 this is 10 over i'll put a little dash 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 dash, dash. and then 10 down is Dash, 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 dash. And so my resultant then looks like this. And uh, there it is, R. And now notice, uh, let's now compare. You see, you got the same R both for both cases. Both methods work. Uh, each one has its advantages. Sometimes you really need to do it head to tail. Sometimes you really need to do it uh, component method. Okay. And I'll say on there, if it's a test, you know, use component method, use head to tail. Uh, this test will not have component method. Okay. We've not, this is the first day you've been introduced to it. It'd be crazy to give you a test over it. So that, I, I promise you, component method will not be in the test. There could be some head to tail stuff, okay? A little bit. Okay, uh, finally, the last thing before we go, um, we need to describe this vector and you would describe it like this, okay? 
I'm going to describe this vector. I would say R to describe R, it is oh, ha ha ha. I thought it was easier now. Okay, I'm, I don't want to mess with that right now. You got to give the length, which is just, it's just Pythagorean theorem. It's root 200, right? It's 100 plus 100, root 200. Uh, let's not worry about it right now. Then you got to get the angle. Because the angle here is easy. It's 45 degrees. Oh, let's do it. Okay, what's root 100? Root 200. It's uh, 10 times root two, right? Okay, so so the the R then is 10, just because I don't want to get my calculator out, 10 root two, uh, and this is meters, at 45 degrees south of east. That puts it in the right quadrant, 45 degrees south of east. Mr. Asky, it's 14. Yeah. One forward to be specific. okay. So it's ten root two. I'm gonna, I'll go with your answer. Ten root two is fourteen point one four. So we'll just say fourteen point one. Then that's that sounds better. Fourteen point one meters. So a, point, a zoom point there for helping me out. Fourteen point one meters at forty five degrees south of east. Okay, and that's the proper description of that arrow. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Jacob. Jacob, help me out too. I'll give you a point. All right, um, that we are now ahead of everybody else. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be. They'll be talking about this, and I guarantee. And I'll send them to the board. We'll probably do some more examples of this tomorrow, uh, just to get a little more in your head. This is more of a second semester thing, uh, but I do need to at some point tomorrow. Oh, here's tonight's homework. Uh, work on the take on test 2B. That's the main thing you got to do because that's due at midnight tonight. Uh, work on your packet organizer and then notice the keys are on the Facebook group. But the other thing tomorrow we'll work on mostly besides some more examples is we'll work on, and I think the only chance we're going to get to get anything done is, is the front. We'll get the front of this, try and finish the front. And then the back on 216, now you can take a big X and exit out. We're going to get to that, but it'll be that I'll, I'll recopy that. That'll be the first thing we do. I may just recopy all of 216, but it depends on what happens tomorrow. Okay. Maybe there's a fire drill or something and it ruins it for class. You never know. Norman high school. All right. Stop sharing. Now I know that Friday seems weird. And uh, if you have an issue uh, because, you know, COVID's run amok now in Norman and you go, I ain't getting out of the house. I ain't going to your porch, old man. Okay, then I'll come to you. I mean, you know, we'll figure it. You'll you'll put it in your mailbox or something, and I'll come get it. But uh, we just got we've got to have. I I just unless you're gonna go out and buy yourself an iPad, we're gonna have to do it uh, by paper and pencil. You just can't do this stuff. You can't do physics on canvas unless you're taking pictures of, of stuff. And I don't I don't I mean I, I don't like I just don't like my uh, tests getting out there in PDFs and I was allowing the I was allowing the PDF for test 2A because you weren't turning you weren't turning anything in but my logic is if you're turning something in anyway you might as well just grab a test see what I'm saying because you're here just take a test that way the, the only problem is if you do it and then say well I don't want to bring it to you because I don't want to get out of the house um then I guess in that case you got to send me a PDF but then I've got to go. Then I've got to go print it off. You know what I'm saying? And then it's prints. It's not a good printer. And can't see it very good. It just doesn't work real well. We can do it. I mean, it's not like we can't do it. But if it's if it's a safety issue, then yeah, we'll we'll do it. Whatever. Um, but just mess direct message me that stuff. Lord, for you have a special situation. Okay. Got it. Uh, anything else before we say goodbye? Oh, I have a question. Yes. So I looked up orange equations on Google and I got <laughs> something different. <laughs> what? There's no I was orange equations on Google. <laughs> there was, I the only, see if it was I know the only orange equations you're going to find on Google is some old picture of what I did. <laughs> 
Now, if you yeah, look up no. if you look up kinematic equations, you'll find them. Just, oh. just straight, just say kinematic equations. Um, the okay. only reason they're called orange is um, the person that made that printed them off once a long time ago for me printed them off on orange construction paper, and so they became the orange equation. This is like this is like twenty years ago, and so it's got a life of its own. But it's just considered like a if you look up kinematic equations, you'll get some, and it's, it'll be those three. Maybe they'll put a fourth one in there, uh, but that's what a college book would show as kinematic equations. Um, yeah, but but we we talk about orange and blue and green mainly to, mainly to put you in the situation. A lot of physics is classification and categorizing. Like in biology, you categorize insects and stuff. Well, in physics, you categorize relationships. And so this is me categorizing, uh, like separating out things that go like this and up and down inclined planes. Orange equations are very general. And I think uh, if Mr. Pentecost doesn't really mess with blue. He just keeps it all orange. I do blue out of necessity because otherwise kids get so confused on verdict on g and a and which way it's going and if you say oh these are blue okay oh okay I'm, i know what category i'm in i know what subset of equations i'm messing with so it's a pedagogical thing i mean um yeah look up blue equations let's see what happens <laughs> uh, i don't know it'd be weird there might be some old stuff on there from previous years anybody else I was having an issue on the last part of number eight on the take home test. I don't know how to find, like, drawing the next five displacement vectors. I'm confused on how to find, how to fill in the chart. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay. So um, that one, you, you were there last night, Rose? Yes, I was. Okay. Okay. Uh, let, let me close this out, and because um, I had some kids there today at lunch asking the same question. That's a hard one. It's a it's parabolic. You have to with that one. There's no like like on the the second one on the velocity. You can just kind of take a ruler and say, okay, I know all my tips have got to be linear. Uh, but with that one, uh, you have to actually plug the number into an equation. I'll show you. It's Okay, I'll show you. We're almost got it. It's almost opening up here. It takes forever. Here we go. All right, this is number eight. And yeah, there'll be one like number eight on there, so it's worth... Okay, let me share the screen again. Oh, here we go again. Okay, I got to do it through AirPlay. Share. What am I? My cable might be bad. All right, now come down here. Link that out. There we go. Okay. Now, um, so this one we're talking about. Um, let me erase that. I don't want to give that away. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So now, um, this one uh, on this, and, and I promise you, it'll be orange. We do these in blue as well, but that that'll be if we do that at all. It'll be next semester. So. This is always going to be the first orange. We'll go, we'll, we'll be this one right here. It'll always be the first orange. This will always be the second orange. And you go, hey, I don't remember second orange having three blanks like that or three. Second orange only has delta x. Well, the second orange is delta x. And that's the one, that's the, that, that is the one you would use if you're working an equation, if you're working a problem. But in a graph like this, uh, the second orange is written this way. It's written, it's, these, these are the same equations. In fact, on the equation sheet, I have both versions of the second orange. This is the second orange for graphs. It's still the same equation. Remember delta X, delta X stands for X minus X naught. And so all I did was I brought the X naught over to the right side of the equation and left this as X. So in my blanks, this is x naught, and x naught is, according to the graph, is 24, right? So x naught is 24. 24 meters goes here. 
V naught I get from this graph. V naught, right? It told me V naught was 12. So it's like a puzzle. So V naught is 12 meters per second. And then this is one half A T squared. Well, A, going back to the A graph, it's negative six. So that's minus then, because it's one, so it's minus, this is minus three, one half of six is three. So it's three meters per second squared times T squared. So here's my equation that I, that I had to deal with. And really at this point, what you need to do is plug in numbers. That's why I gave you a T chart. So you plug in one for T and zero for T gives you 24. One for T gives you 12, 24 plus 12 minus 33. 33, right? So you get 33. If you plug in two, 24 plus 24 minus 12, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So you plug them in and then you put those points like there's 24, the next one's 33. Is that right? 33, really? 33, really? I guess that's right, 24, 36. Yeah, you're right, 33. The next one was, so that means that my next arrow looks like this. If I do it in blue, my next arrow looks like this. It goes all the way up to there and it points to that point. That's, that's telling you the displacement vector at one second. The displacement vector at zero seconds is already at 24. That was initial, initial conditions. And then when I plug in two, that's 24 plus 24 is 48, uh, minus 12 puts me at 36. So I'm at 36 now. So the next one's at 36, which puts me right there. Each one of these is four. Yeah, uh, yeah, each one of these is four. So the next one's at 36. Now my next arrow then goes all the way up and hits that. I like these kind of problems because they're vectors and they're graphs and they're kinematics all in one. And then you keep doing that. Okay, now what you're gonna find is, now notice, notice, see this right here? This is where it, this point right here is where it, that, that's, like a, that's like a lopsided uh, bow tie. And that's where it crosses from going forward to going backwards. So that must be an apex. It's either an apex, it's either a maximum or a minimum. And in this case, it's a maximum because when I draw my parabola, and I sketched it on there on that last night. Well, tonight when I do it, I'll do it really nice and neat. But when I draw my parabola, it's see I'm connecting the tips. And then that thing is gonna, it's symmetrical. So it's gonna come back around and it'll end up somewhere back in here. And then, but then, then you, draw your, you draw your arrows, okay? But it's hard to predict, you know, you can use, you can use the concept of symmetry but you need to fill out this table anyway, so. Okay, Does that help, uh, Rose? Yes, thank okay. you. Uh, anybody else? So on that, just try your best and uh, you're gonna get credit on most things. Uh, you'll get most of the credit, even if you're wrong. Uh, if I, I'm gonna take off a little bit, I'm just, I'm not so much worried about you're doing it perfect on the take home. You do want to study the key though. So you're going to get, you know, you, you fill everything out. You're going to get out of hundred, you're going to get at least an 80. And if you did everything wrong and you fill it all out though, you're probably still going to get an 80 because I'm giving you points for effort. Uh, but then you, it's up to you to check that key tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night to make sure that you're right. Uh, that you were doing it correctly because the big test you know is, thir is for you guys thursday friday so whether you come in on thursday whether you take that test thursday or friday doesn't matter to me uh work out work it out with your schedule but it'll be in the it'll be in the bin your your actual test um to be and then for those virtual kids who are doing the final that's going to be that is going to be through canvas it's going to be multiple choice like 10 questions, it's only worth 100 points. Uh, anybody can take it who wants to, but keep in mind though, if you, well, I mean, you have to take it if you got a C, D or an F, but if you're an A student, you go, oh, I wanna try this and you bomb it and you had a 91% and you now drop to a B, <laughs> you shouldn't have taken it. 
So uh, don't take it unless you, unless you want that grade to count. And if, have, if I had an 89%, I'd take the daggone thing because maybe I'll do, if worst case scenario, 100 points ain't gonna drop you to a C. And uh, maybe I get an A out of it, so. Okay. All right, then. We've gone over, but that's cool. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.